there are applications that might be better than Excel for using checkboxes, but sometimes you either have to use Excel or maybe it's just your go-to and you want to use it. No problem. Typically, you want to use the developer tab to add a form or ActiveX control to add a checkbox, but we're not going to do that. In fact, you don't even need a developer tab enabled to follow along for this video, but I'm just showing how tedious it could be to add a checkbox. Not only do I need to move this into a row, I also need to write some code to tell Excel which cell the checkbox even represents. It's very tedious. But don't worry, I have a workaround for this and it's actually pretty easy to do. So you can see I have O here under enrolled and I want to have a checkbox under each row in this column enrolled or C here. So I have O's and I have X's. Now right now this does not look like a checklist, either of these. But I will change your mind in about a minute here. So I'm going to convert these to wingdings, okay? One here, the O is now a checkbox that's blank. And then we have a checked one on the right side there. So what can we do? So we click on the blank checkbox to make it turn into an X and vice versa. Okay, we gotta use a little bit of code here, VBA. So go ahead and hit Alt and F11. So by default, you're gonna see sheet one here. Go ahead and double click on that. That's where we're gonna put our code. And we need to make the code trigger on something. So we're gonna make it when you double click on the cell. So one, to set the focus on the cell. And then the second time to actually check or uncheck the checkbox. Okay, now I'm gonna specify the range here. So this is happening in column C under my enrolled column. This part with cancel equals true, this just prevents us from editing the cell when we double click on it. Typically when you double click, it would edit, it would highlight the text and we don't want that. Okay, so now we're checking if the font is wingdings and if it is, it'll change a O to an X if double click or vice versa. So again, O will appear as a blank checkbox, X will appear as a filled checkbox. This code will just switch the value every time we double click on it, so it'll go back and forth just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and fix the formatting here. I just find this less confusing that way. So we have a few if statements here, so we need to end the if statements or else we'll get an error. You kinda of see how this all works. Okay, so now that we're done here, we can go ahead and close our VBA window. Let's try it out. If we did everything correct, it should change these blank checkbox to fill checkbox. So let's check it out. There we go, it works. Awesome. So you can see that unchecking the box is working as well. Now let's say you wanna change this so you only have to click on the cell once. I prefer a double click, but everyone does it differently. So that's totally fine. What you wanna do is you just change this right here. Okay. Gonna get rid of this part right here. Now we're gonna change this right here. Specifically, that's right here. We're gonna change this to selection, change. Okay, everything else is the same. Now we'll go back here. One click, one click, one click. There you go. Now, if you want, you can take this even a step further. You can create some kind of macro that displays information over here when you click it. So for example, I'm clicking here. I have a date timestamp along with my username, same for here. And if I click it again, it'll disappear and so on. This is pretty similar to the video I showed you where you enter text in certain columns and it'll output the username and date timestamp in a different column. But I'll go ahead and leave the code for this and if you wanna play around with it, you can, but there's a lot of potential with this. Finally, at the time of this video, it appears that Microsoft is planning to roll out checkboxes for each row in Excel. However, as of October, 2024, I don't have this function in Excel. And I suspect many of you don't either. Nevertheless, the use of the wingdings approach will still have some advantages. So for example, J in wingdings is a smiley face and L is a sad face. Or C in wingdings is a thumbs up and D is a thumbs down. There are many other combinations as well. I suggest you give it a try and find something that works for you. That about wraps things up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you thought. If you ever have ideas for videos too, please let me know. This specific video, I got the idea from a comment on another video I did, and you never know. I'm happy to consider any ideas that you might have. For now, take care. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you all later.